Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you a simple hack to make your games run smoother in Pygame. Let's dive right in. Physics and collisions rules in games define how players, NPCs and other objects interact with each other and the game world. However, these physics engines can sometimes cause the most bizarre and funny bugs. Some of these bugs are often related to the game's frame rate. Problems can appear when the frame rate is too low or even when it's too high. This is one of the first mistakes you make when you start developing games. When you implement controls and adjust the speed based on your PC, it might seem fine at first, but once you share the game with your friend or test it on another computer, you will notice that it doesn't behave the same anymore. The game might seem to run too slow or too fast, depending on the situation. That happens when you tie your game logic and physics to the frame rate. To try and resolve this, the simplest way is to fix the frame rate to a constant value. In Pygame, this is done by passing the desired frame rate to the clock tick method. This makes the time between frames more or less constant, leading to a more predictable movement. However, this isn't a perfect solution. The time between frames can still vary, causing a bit of stuttering. But even worse, if the game is running on a potato that cannot maintain the defined frame rate, your game will end up running in slow motion. So a relative simple and better solution is to monitor the time passed since the previous frame. Normally this is called delta time. Using this value you can move game elements proportionally to the time that has passed since the previous frame. This way the game behaves the same regardless of the frame rate. Well, almost always. Issues can still arise with object interactions, such as collisions. When the frame rate is low, that is, delta time is large and the colliding objects are narrow or moving fast relative to each other, an object might simply pass through another without registering a collision. Game engines typically solve this by running the physics engine at a separate fixed rate, independent of the graphics. For example, Godot updates physical objects 60 times per second by default. This way the frame rate cannot affect the physics, since it always runs at a fixed time interval. While recreating Bracky's game, this issue caught my attention. Initially, I just ignored it, as I hadn't experienced such problems before. But when I was publishing the game on itch.io, the player was passing through the platforms because on my computer, the game was running at hundreds of frames per second without any problems, but on the web the frame rate is limited by the monitor's refresh rate, which in my case is 60Hz. So the first idea that may come to mind is multi-threading or concurrent processing, where you would have two game loops inside one, one for the graphics and another for the physics, running at the same time, just like Godot. But this can get complicated very fast. So that's topic for another day. Today I will share a simple hack that I thought of to solve this problem without significantly increasing code complexity while achieving nearly the same effect, especially for simpler games with fewer object interactions. I'm sure some games out there also use this approach, but I didn't bother to research it. The basic idea is to split the delta time between frames into fixed intervals, also known as time steps, and run the interactions between objects incrementally until the equivalent time is reached. To do this, divide the delta time by the defined time step to determine the number of iterations. Here, I run it the result before converting it to an integer, which will be used in a for loop. In this loop, I execute all the player and game objects updates, replacing the delta time I was using before with the time step. Only after updating all the objects and player positions outside of the for loop, I do render them on the screen with the less calculated position. For the special case where the frame rate is higher than the physics update rate, I can replace the time step with delta time, as the smaller time steps usually don't cause any problems. To recap and make the difference between the different approaches a bit clearer, I have created a very simple demonstration here where I simulate the vertical collision of a ball with a solid block, a simple one dimensional simulation. I have considered here that the frame rate at which the game was originally programmed was 85 fps 
And since my computer here can deliver much more than that, the simulation here is way faster than the desired velocity. If I switch to the approach of limiting the frame rate to 85 fps, everything works perfectly. However, for demonstration purposes, I have included the option to simulate an irregular frame rate, which basically inserts a random pause between each frame. Now we see that the collisions happen correctly, but it is all in slow motion, because the program can no longer maintain a frame rate of 85 fps. If I switch to the delta time approach, the simulation speed is correct again. However, when used in conjunction with the irregular frame rate, in some cases, the collision is not registered and the ball goes straight through the block. And finally, with the time step, everything works perfectly, with the simulation at the correct speed and always registering the collisions. You can also try this demo on itch.io and I will post the code there too. And that's basically what I wanted to share in today's video. Now it is possible, though not ideal, to play the game at very low frame rates, like for example 10 frames per second. After all, you never know when someone with a potato might try to run your game. But at least the physics should work correctly, most of the time. Let me know in, in the comments what you think of this method. Do you do something similar in your games? What other simple approach could be used? Thanks for watching and until the next time.